Welcome to This Week in Formula 1, where today we are going to analyse the news that Lando Norris has replaced Stoffel van Dorn at McLaren. We will also look at Fernando Alonso testing an IndyCar. And also see how serious Red Bull's threat to quit F1 is. Keep watching this video to find out more. First though, we're going to start off with some different piece of news which is Charlie Whiting talking about team alliances. Alliances like the one between Haas and Ferrari. This is what he had to say. It's something that we should be concerned about, and it's something we will be discussing. The Haas-Ferrari relationship started it. We knew exactly how that was possible in the beginning, and there was a loophole in the beginning which has been close to new entrants, which is what Haas were able to do. A lot more work than a current team before they were established as a proper entrant. But the sort of things we're hearing about are alliances between existing teams. I think that needs to be looked at very carefully. Now look, I see what he's saying here, but honestly I don't see how he can do anything about this. Unless it's an exact copy of another car, I don't see how you can do anything. There have been plenty of teams down the years that have had some kind of alliance. For example, Red Bull and Toro Rosso. And again, unless one car is an exact copy of the other car, I don't see what you can do to stop these alliances. Next up though is the news that Daniel Kvyat could be heading back to Toro Rosso. And Kvyat certainly does deserve to have a seat in F1. As in his career so far, he has two podiums and 133 points. He does have 16 retirements, but a best race result of P2. A driver that really should still be in F1. Now again, even though I think Kvyat should be in F1, I don't think he should go back to Toro Rosso. Essentially because of the way that Red Bull treated him. First with the way they dropped him from the main Red Bull team in 2016, and with the way they treated him in 2017 at Toro Rosso. As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to Kvyat, they mugged him off. So for me, Daniel should just do the same back. And for me, he would be a mug if he went back to Toro Rosso. Now though, let's look at Fernando Alonso testing an Indy car. And I think it's safe to say Fernando did have a lot of fun. This is what he said after his test. It was a good day, a fun day. I love to test new cars and to test the Indy car on a road course is something special. It was something that I was looking for last year already. I had some options to test the car on a road course after the Indy 500. We didn't find the time, but this year it's definitely happened now and I'm happy for this. I love being behind a steering wheel, and definitely a new car, a new experience, learning a lot of things from the team. The engineers, everyone, so a happy day. I've been lucky enough to test it in wet conditions, in intermediate conditions and in dry conditions. So overall I had a good feeling on every type of track. The weather was good for us today, a little bit of wind in the afternoon, but overall a positive day. Now from those quotes, I think it's pretty clear that Fernando is going to go to IndyCar for 2019. Which, to be honest, is no real surprise. As his desire is to complete that triple crown. And from what we've heard there, he has had a good experience so far. And hopefully for 2019, he does go to IndyCar. Now let's look at Red Bull's threat to quit F1. If their new relationship coming out of Honda does not work. Helmut Marko made it pretty simple. We are happy to have a great partner with Honda for the next few years. However, should this cooperation for whatever reason not work as expected, Red Bull will leave F1. Some pretty strong words there by Helmut Marko. Now of course Red Bull have threatened to quit F1 plenty of times, but this is definitely the most serious yet. Because if it does not work out with Honda, then who is going to supply them? because Renault, Mercedes and Ferrari are definitely not going to. And from what we've heard in 2021, no one knew is coming into the sport. So if their relationship with Honda does not work, I wouldn't be surprised if they left. And it actually would make sense, because they would not be able to find anyone to power them to victory. But hopefully the Red Bull-Honda partnership does work, because it absolutely has to. Let's move on though to Toto Wolff feeling sorry for Sebastian Vettel, despite going up against Sebastian for both world titles. This is what Toto said. He has the ambition, if possible, always to win, and brings with it the necessary aggression. That requires a lot of courage, 
That sometimes leads to collisions is part of his way of driving a Formula 1 car. After all, he has become a world champion four times. You have to accept that, even if you work with Lewis like me. Now I see what Toto's trying to get at, but I do disagree. Yes, there are moments where you have to be aggressive, like with Lewis Hamilton at the Italian Grand Prix. But the difference is that he was aggressive at the right time. Sebastian still does not know when to be aggressive or cautious, which is why he is making so many mistakes. And learning when to be cautious and then when to be aggressive is so important. But in my opinion, Sebastian has failed to learn that. Which is why Lewis Hamilton currently leads in the driver's standings. Because Lewis knows when to be cautious and then when to be aggressive. And the final piece is Lando Norris replacing Stoffel van Dorn at McLaren. And for Lando, a dream has come true. This is what Lando had to say. This is a special moment. One I could only hope would become reality. To be announced as a race driver for McLaren is a dream come true. And I will say that Lando does have an impressive record in the junior formulas. As he has won the MSA formula, the Toyota Racing Series and the Formula Renault 2.0. And has also won the Euro Cup Formula Renault 2.0 and the FIA F3 European Series. And right now is second in the F2 driver standings. Now if McLaren don't get their act together long term this might not be a good move for Lando Norris. Because as we've seen with Kevin Magnussen and Sergio Perez they do destroy young careers. And could easily do it again with Lando. So here's hoping that McLaren actually make a good car for once. For Stoffel van Dorn though his McLaren career is over. This is what he said. The past two seasons we didn't achieve the success we'd hoped. But I want to thank everyone for the opportunities they gave me. I intend to give it my all for the remaining 7 races of this season. And I will announce my plans for next season in due course. Now even though I do like Van Dorn it's safe to say his season has not been good. Scoring just 8 points with also 2 retirements. With the best qualifying result of P11 and the best race result of P8. But in the last few races Stoffel has been really poor which has led to him being replaced by Lando Norris. And I really hope that Stoffel does find a seat in F1. Maybe who knows at Toro Rosso. This guy does have massive talent. And I hope that he does rebuild his career like Kevin Magnussen and Sergio Perez did after their time at McLaren. Because Stoffel has much more yet to give to F1. But guys, that is it for this video. Let's go ahead and look at my upcoming videos. On Wednesday I'm going to be uploading a career tribute to Fernando Alonso. And then on Thursday will be a preview for the Singapore Grand Prix. So hopefully you guys can join me for that. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. As well guys don't forget to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video. And comment down below what did you think of some of the news stories in this video. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.